Hey guys, welcome back to The Wandering Wind. It's good to see you again. I'm actually going to talk a bit about something I mentioned in yesterday's video. Um, I mentioned a comment about how I view being let go from my job as a blessing in a way. And granted, I don't, I don't necessarily enjoy the fact that I'm getting um, 800 and less a month because that was a pretty cushy, cushy job I was getting about. 200 a week, so that was nice to have the extra, but the fact that I don't have any more, I'm not, I'm not as broken up about as I probably would have been had I not really been watching a lot of videos while I was sick, talking about this kind of thing, and that's really, um, what kind of clued me into the fact that I'm probably going to end up getting let go anyway was... The first day I was off that week from COVID, I had a video in my recommendations, why you should think about quitting your job. And one of the main reasons was if you think, if you would, if you seriously consider ending things rather than going to work, if you seriously consider just laying down and dying rather than going to work, you probably need to quit your job. If you hate your job as much as you hate, you know, like, say, your in-laws or whatever, you should probably, you know, and, you know, I thought about that. I thought about that kind of a concept of, do I hate my job that much? Then I would rather, if, if I were chained to my desk at work, would I rather chew off the limb that's chained to my desk rather than stay there. And honestly, if that were the case, I probably would have said yes. And I... N no shade on the people that I worked with at all. At all. If any of you are watching this, guys, I love you. You're so amazing. I loved every second of being able to see you guys and work with you guys, but I'm sorry, but sometimes the work itself, I mean between the workload that we were expected to keep up with that we couldn't, and then the fact that we got yelled at for stuff that wasn't even our fault, I'm sorry, but doing that kind of a job stressed me out more than not having a job at all. Stressed me out more than years ago being completely penniless, not even on Social Security, and not knowing where next month's rent's going to come from, because honestly... We've tried every single church in town and can't find anything. <laughs> and me having to go to GameStop and sell my brand new 3DS for sub $200 just to be able to actually pay the rent. Because at that time we were only paying like $120, 130 a month. And we didn't have any jobs, so it was between keeping my luxury, and, and keeping our house. So, I mean, that's how stressed I was back then. And not having a job now stresses me less than that. But having that job stressed me out more than that. That, that was a bad sign. I should have known better. But another big thing is just I could feel God calling me to say, you know, I have something different I can probably do. Something different I can probably be involved in. Something different that I can probably start myself. I mean, I've got skills, okay? I was talking to a friend of mine who actually works at a brand new business. And he, he we were actually talking the other day. We picked him up from work early because he got off of work early because the, the boss basically said, we have no business. We're shutting down early. So we're at group. Well, we're at Bible study. He calls us and says, can you come pick us up? Come pick me up. We're closing early because nobody's here. And he comes out and he says, guys, can you please just come in and, and, and play a couple of rounds? Come on, just, just pay for a couple of hours. And that way we can stay open and I can get paid. And I told him, look, I'm so sorry. I don't have any money left. If I did, I would. And I would have. If I if I'd had the money, I would have definitely went in, paid for my hour, and let him continue to work so he would have had a full day. 
And, you know, I thought to myself later on, because we were talking, we went to a restaurant, and I said, you know, what kind of social media marketing does this guy do? Does he do, like, constant updates? Does he do, like, dramatized videos of people participating? Because it's an axe-throwing place. You go in, you got a coach that teaches you how to throw it, and then you spend an hour just having fun, sucking an axe at a, at a target. And hoping you can get a bullseye, but at least you're getting in the target. And I thought, you know, there are several different ways that you can go viral marketing with this kind of an activity. Have a decent camera. Take a decent shot of someone doing like a trick shot or doing something really unexpected or just, you know, stay there for a whole day. See if there's any moments that really pop out at you and just say, wow, that'd be great on, say, TikTok or on Facebook or on YouTube or on Instagram and then post it. And I said, you know, has he ever thought about maybe hiring a marketer, hiring a social media marketer to really just push the envelope of what is possible about just getting eyes on the business? And he says, no, but I bet if he went in and talked to him, he'd be more than happy to try it. And I thought, you know, I could do that for small businesses. I'm marketing. I have a marketing mind. Maybe I don't have a degree. I don't have a degree, but I've got skills that could definitely pay bills if I got a hold of the right people and generated the right amount of interest. Definitely. I've got ideas. I've got passions. I've got things that I can do that other people can't. But am I using them? And I think that's where God was really pushing me was he was opening a door by closing this one. Uh, he, he closed the door on my job that I was at. He basically said, yeah, you got COVID, you got sick. They're not going to keep you. Just close the door. All right, I get it. Where I'm going next is an open open hallway with a lot of open doors. I'm not sure which one is the one God's going to guide me to, but I got options, and I don't have to necessarily go into a nine-to-five shift. I don't have to go into the nine to five grind like what most people expect me to do because most people expect me to be just like everybody else because honestly that's the way things are anymore. We live in a culture that is so well we have lived in a culture. It is starting to change but for the last 40-50 years the culture was you go to work you come home you eat dinner, you spend a little bit of time with your kids and your family, you go to bed, you get up the next day, you do that for the next 40 years, and then you die because you can't earn enough to retire. That was the idea. And now you have social media giants that have billions of dollars in, in assets. You have YouTubers that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. You've got Logan Paul and Jake Paul who are just filthy dang rich. You've got, you've got people like Roberto Blake, who aren't the most huge creators on the market, but they've got assets besides their channel, besides their, their media. They've got their own business. They've got Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, which is the guy whose video I watched first that got me to start thinking. He has said he started this because he wanted to get out of the mindset of being in the box because in the box wasn't making him happy. Honestly, I don't think a lot of us are happy with having a nine to five. It's just a lot of us are stuck because we don't know what else we can do. I think I know where I'm going with that though. I hope I know where I'm going with that or at least I hope he knows. God knows a lot more than I do. Thank God. Thank goodness for that because I'm stupid. <laughs> Compared to the Almighty, I'm an idiot. So thank you for having an infinite IQ versus my limited IQ. <laughs> I mean, seriously, having God on my side, I know that I'll be okay because no matter what, God takes care of me. But I also know that if I trust him and if I listen to him, to him and if I pray, God will show me where I'm going next. So... That's where I that's where I'm going. Where God leads. And I hope that you guys are doing the same. 
Until next time, guys, thank you for watching. God bless you. And I'll see you again next time here on The Wandering Wind. In fact, you'll probably see me tomorrow on stream before you see another video from me. But I'm going to try and do more videos. So, have a good one.